Hello, my, my name is Frank Robel. I work here at the IT center and my slides are about serial tuning. And I want to tell you the main um, topics you should regard making serial programs faster. So I divided this uh, slides in three sections, memory assess, compiler usage and usage of numerical libraries. The most important thing for um, improvement of performance is the hardware architecture. And uh, so memory assess is the most important thing because um, processing uh, processors are getting faster and faster and memory size increases but uh, the latency, the time for memory assess uh, does not increase in the same speed so uh, it's very important how you assess the main memory so that uh, processor has not to wait too often. Um, compiler flex are the second point you can increase speed and uh, usage of numerical libraries um, is another one. So let's start with the memory assess. So the main part of my presentation. Um, I already told you the problem with uh, the big latency of memory assess. So uh, the idea for, for uh, overcome this bottleneck are caches. Caches are placed right near to the core, so they can be much faster than the main memory, but they are also a lot smaller. And there's no way to directly program the usage of these caches. So you have to do it implicit by the way you assess the main memory. And so let's first think about how this cache works. If, if you want to load one element from the main memory, you have to load a complete cache line. This cache line is most times a uh, size of 64 bytes. So if your program uses double precision values, you have to load eight of them. And you can profit of this if you use all eight values. And if you don't do this, you always have to load a new cache line. And this is a big difference of uh, programs that uh, are able to, to use more pro processing time or less of it. So um, they're following a lot of examples, so you can understand it. Um, I have a really easy model of a serial system. You have got one core, modern processors have more, but it's serial tuning, so one core is enough. We have got the cache. Here in this, this time I have got four lines, four cache lines and the main memory. And I know modern processors have multiple levels of cache, but for understanding why cache and the way of assessing the memory is so important, you can see this in this model. So first we think about what happens if we want to access one element from the main memory. We have to load a complete cache line. Now this is the cache line. And it's loaded into the cache. And in this moment, the core can assess the element, can read it, can write it. And if you want to assess another element that is outside this cache line, a new cache line must be loaded. It's all no problem, but it's cost a lot of um, pro uh, lot of cycles. I think several hundred. And we can do this several times. Sometimes uh, uh, the cache will be full. And if we want to load another element outside the loaded cache lines, we get the next problem. We have to drop one cache line first. And if it was modified, we have to write it back. This costs a lot of time. 
then we have to load a new one. So write it back, it's gone. Um, then we have to load a new one, and this is, I think, the worst case. And instead, so in comparison to this, we can see the best case if is if we use an element that is already loaded into the cache. So I just pick uh, one element, doesn't matter which one, only must be already loaded to the cache. So this is only some processor cycles, uh, 10 or 20, I think, and not several hundred. And so I hope you understood a little, a li uh, little bit how it works using this cache. So we come to some examples. I want to calculate uh, different metric norms, um, max norm, and later on first norm. The first norm in different ways. You will see why. Let's start with the max norm. Here's the code. Um, the core of this code consists of four, uh, two for loops. The outer for loop uh, increments the, the i and the inner y. Um, j, sorry. And if we look at this line, that that's says that the array is assessed row by row. And I have a lot of pictures of it, so we can, can look at the pictures. Now there is, isn't any more the core and the cache, but the colors are the same. So blue is, is the memory, yellow is the cache line that is loaded, and red is the used element. So I if we run this algorithm, one cache line is loaded, and then we use the next element of the, ne of the same cache line, and so on. And if we need the element that is not in the cache, new line cache line is loaded and it's all elements are all the time used so it's it's really fine yeah if we complete one row uh, we test if it's bigger than the uh, other found row norms uh, row zooms so and it goes on the same way so now let's take a look on the one norm the same two loops but uh, I switched the, the variables, um, the j and the i. So uh, by by the same way assessing the, the array. So, so um, the result is that the memory is assessed right in the other way. Now we don't assess this row by row, so column, column wise. So we load the first element, we need to load one cache line, we load the second element, we need to load another cache line, and so on. Okay, now you can think, why should it be so, so evil? Um, because it is so evil because the cache size is limited. So if we load a new cache line, sometimes the old cache lines must be dropped because the cache is full. So if we reach the point that we assess the second element in the first row, this cache line wouldn't be anymore in the cache. So it must be reloaded. So every assessed element needs um, to, to load a whole cache line. So every calculation is uh, of maximum latency of several hundred cycles. So it's getting really worse. Okay, let's think about what we can, what we can do better. Uh, we should switch back the loops, but how can we do this? We need an auxiliary array. You can see this here. And we need to initialize the array. And after that, we can switch back the loops. I is the outer loop and J is the inner loop. And now we write the ex uh, write to the auxiliary array. And after that, we have to, to take another look on the auxiliary array, but it's only one loop, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, back to the pictures. The big difference is now um, the auxiliary array also needs some of some place of the cache. So um, there's only the half of the cache for, or even less for, for the metrics. 
So if, if the matrix is big enough and the auxiliary array too, it doesn't fit completely inside the cache. So for each row, it must be reloaded. And this is not the optimal way, but it's much better than the first possibility I show, uh, I've shown. So um, let's think of how we can uh, optimize it in, in, in another way. Um, we do so-called blocked implementation. And it's done by an additional loop surrounding the two loops that we don't use the complete auxiliary array. We only lead a, uh, use a part of it. And this surrounding loop, um, very important, this is not a 1, this is an L. And this is the size of the block. It should be a multiple of uh, cache line size, or not the cache line size, the elements in the cache line. Uh, uh, in real world, world 8, if you use double precision, a uh, multiple of 8. In my example, multiple of 4. And if you look, okay, the auxiliary array must be um, shown to find the, the maximum. Um, so if you look again on the example, starts in the same way, but we don't go through the complete auxiliary array. We stop after n times of cache size, cache line size, so, and do the next row. So the uh, auxiliary array always, the, pa the used part of the auxiliary array always stays inside the cache. Because if we go further, not the auxiliary array will be dropped because it's used all the time, instead of it, uh, an old cache line of uh, the array will be dropped. So we can do this the whole time, and so on. And yeah, if, if the first block is finished, second block starts, and sometimes the uh, cache line will be dropped, and goes so on. And that's all about memory sass. So um, in the lab, after the next uh, presentation, you have got the chance to reproduce this. And there's a second uh, part of the lab that uh, is about vector, uh, vector matrix multiplication. And this is near, it's also a comparable problem. So uh, I want to talk, oh, much time left. So I can talk about Intel. Uh, I wanted to talk about general compiler flex, but here in our environment, we nearly have we, are on, we only have uh, Intel hardware, or nearly only Intel hardware. So I decided talking about Intel compiler flex, and because it's the next possibility, increasing the speed. So, uh, so um, you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so um, the memory says is a factor of two, three, or four, or even more that it gets faster. And the compiler flex is another two times or three times or four times faster possible. So um, it's very important to, to think about this. And um, most times, it's enough to, to write something like this, as a dash O and two or three, depending on your code, that it becomes really fast. And uh, But in our environment, you do not have all the time the possibility to compile on the same hardware that you use in, in, in your batch job. Mm, I think in the next talk you will mm, be introduced in batch jobs. And this is, uh, this is a problem so that you uh, have to get away compiling optimized for the hardware where the job is running and not where it's compiled. And Intel offers a way doing this by um, compiler flex like dash x. And um, after that, you give uh, a word for the used. Um, for, for the used hardware. Yeah? Um, for example, nowadays AVX or SSE 4.2. And 
if you use this a special version you get the problem that it will only run on exactly this hardware you you it will not run on on older hardware and so there is a alternative version using dash ax then also a uh, uh, baseline optimized version will be built that runs i think on sse2 but if you use this you get the problem that you never will know really if it was the best way so but but, but it's it's more safe so um in our environment you can use standard variables like dollar uh, like flex like, like flex fast and it com contains a lot of flex and if you use this it doesn't matter which compiler is loaded it always has got uh, uh, some flex that do do the right thing i hope so um on the next slide we can see some of these flex that are inside flex fast of course um it's dash o three it's most times the best if you have got numerical algorithms, but there are possibilities that dash o two is better, so it's not always the best using flex fast and it's dash i p inside that uh, is important for interprocedural optimization, whatever that means. can talk about this later, I think. And this e IPO is not inside, but you sometimes it's, it's uh, useful trying it if it's even faster with IPO, because this does an interprocedural optimization over the border of files, uh, uh, optimization between files. And this AX is inside with, I think, AVX and core IVX2 and so. And the last very important thing is the floating point model that increases uh, the calculation speed a lot if your code contains a lot of uh, divisions, for example, floating point divisions. Uh, if you do them at the maximum of um, uh, precision, it takes a long time doing uh, div division, division. And here you can uh, say that it may be... Uh, you can fasten it. Fasten? So um, you lose some of the precision, but it's sometimes very much faster. So this is also a possibility to try it. Okay, this is about compiler flex. This is a really complicated part, but it, it's useful trying trying to change the flex and so. Okay, th this is a much more easier part. Um, numerical, uh, our, our codes are often numerical, uh, made of numerical kernels and these numerical kernels can be found in libraries like, like BLAS or LAPAC and things like this. So there are special implementations from the different vendors like, like Intel. Intel has got a uh, ma Intel mask kernel library with optimized implementation of BLAS, LAPAC and Fast Fourier and things like this. And there's also a version from AMD. So we have mainly Intel hardware, so we use Intel MKL. And if, you progr if your program uses a BLAS routine, you can just uh, switch the used library by, by linking to the right one. So it's a real easy way, and you don't have to, to look for optimization. If there's new hardware, you just switch the library, and everything is fine. So um, next is presentation from Tim Kramer, but after that there will be labs for 